In this video, I'm going to be going over tautomerization. So generally what I'm going to cover is just the mechanisms going from a keto to an enol using uh, a base and then an acid. And I'll also show going from an enol to a keto using also a base and acid catalyst. In a future video, I'll do harder examples to really go deeper into tautomerization and test the understanding. So without stalling anymore, let's talk about our base catalyzed tautomerization with a keto as our starting product. So there's my keto. I'm just gonna use acetone. And then for base, I'm just gonna use hydroxide. This could be potassium hydroxide, could be sodium hydro hydroxide, you pick it. Uh, okay, so I'm identifying the most acidic H, which is on this alpha position. So that's one carbon away from the carbonyl. Uh, that's the most acidic H, and so our hydroxide is going to lend its electrons to pull off that proton, which are going to flop the previous sigma bond electrons down to create a pi bond, which is also going to break the carbonyl's pi bond, just like I've shown. We create an O minus and a double bond, and we can call this intermediate species right here an enolate. Uh, it's a quick aside right there, but going forward, uh, we now have water in solution. So I'm going to draw that like this. So we're going to do something with our highest energy thing, which is our enolate, and specifically the O minus. So the negative charge, or uh, rather the electrons on the oxygen, are going to pull off the proton of water. So we're going to flop electrons back onto that oxygen. And we'll create this product right here. And just for the sake of learning, it might be nice to note that we have successfully regenerated our catalyst, which is just hydroxide. And so we can see that we started with a keto, and we ended with our enol. And this is just for our base cataly catalyzed tautomerization. Uh, now I should also note that in every tautomerization, from here on out, every step is also reversible. So I really should have these arrows here that I just drew. Okay, so noting that, let's go on to our enol to keto tautomerization. So for our enol tautomerization, we're going to start, of course, with our enol. Probably should have given myself more room right there. And we said it's base catalyzed, so let's go ahead and throw some base in there. Now, just like before, we're going to do something with our highest energy thing right now that we have to play with, and that's just the hydroxide. And so it's going to look for the most acidic H to pull off because it's a base, and that's going to be on this alcohol. And so we can draw our electrons moving to pull off that H. When they do that, the sigma bond between that O and the H will break um, and get flopped down to make a pi bond, which will throw electrons onto that carbon, we get this intermediate, and we now have water in solution. Now we want to regenerate our catalyst, so water is really close to hydroxide, so we can imagine that these electrons will like to pull off that uh, proton and give oxygen its electrons back. When we're finished. Uh, doing this, we will have created our keto. And again, just for the sake of it, showing that we regenerized our hydroxide. Again, these arrows are reversible. So, and we are going to start our keto right there, and that is our keto. So now let's jump into our acid catalyzed tautomerization. Okay, for acid catalyzed tautomerization, we're going to start with our keto, like we did for the base. For my acid, I'm going to use hydronium, just because it's easy. 
So now we have something that's high in energy. Let's go ahead and do something with that. Well, there's a lone pair of electrons on that oxygen that can easily donate to this acidic proton on hydronium. And so we'll see exactly that happening. And now that oxygen has our proton, so we're going to get a positive charge. We now have water in solution. And now we just have to find a way to stabilize our intermediate. Well, there's an H right here that we could call relatively acidic, and our water, uh, the oxygen on our water is going to have this lone pair of electrons that are going to donate to it. Let's pull it off. We have to flop electrons down, and when you do that, break this pi system. And we have created our enol. Again, I keep forgetting to show my arrows as being reversible, but there we go. Alright, so our last one, we're going to go from an enol to a keto. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our enol like this. And then again, hydronium, just easy to use acid. Now we have to find a position uh, where this H can be uh, substituted onto. So in other words, I'm going to do something with my highest energy thing being this hydronium, right? Well, uh, a good place uh, to suggest this H being pulled off is actually through this double bond system right here. You can imagine that if these electrons on the oxygen uh, through resonance flopped down to create a uh, pi bond right there, the ones on, or the uh, pi bond between this carbon right here and this carbon could do something that looks somewhat like that, which is exactly what happens. And when you do that, this is what our intermediate will look like. And just for the sake of showing it, that's where that proton went. Now we have water and solution. And we need to do something with our highest energy intermediate right here. So it has a proton that's very acidic on it. And we have water that we want to regenerate into hydronium. So let's go ahead and do that by pulling off that proton and stabilizing our intermediate. By doing this, we have effectively created a ketone and H3O plus. Okay, so that was it all, going from a keto to an enol, and then this last one was an enol to a keto. So in the next video, we'll go over a few harder examples, um, still centered around tautomerization.